3 replaced chips, 1 restored disk drive. What was wrong with it? Watch this summary of the repair and find out. Hello and welcome to the chicken farm. This is a standard Commodore 1541 floppy disk drive. After turning it on, I stumbled on probably the most common problem with these units. The red LED should turn off but it doesn't and the drive motor should turn off as well but it does not. The issue with this drive is that it doesn't reset properly. The reset pulse happens either when the drive is powered on or when the drive is already on and we turn on a say C64 connected to said drive. When everything works fine, the CPU thus executes its reset routine, giving control of the drive to the disk operating system as per the manual. Let's first take a look at the drive's reset circuit. The reset signal goes to these three bigger chips, the CPU and the two vias. But the reset pulse gets first picked up by these three smaller logic chips, which we'll scrutinize next. So let's pop the hood and get a closer look. First, let's compare the reset signal on a good and on the bad drive. A moment after turning the drive on, the signal on the good drive goes from low to high. But on the bad drive, nothing happens, the line stays low. Let's see if any of the chips are faulty by starting with the first one in line, which is called UA1. This is a NUT logic gate, designation 74LS14. As this is an inverter, the input signal gets inverted on the output. A low signal will turn into a high signal and a high into a low. Let's put it to the test and see if it behaves this way or not. Pin 1 is high, so pin 2 should be low. It is. Pin 3 is low, so pin 4 should be high. But it is not, it's in limbo, neither high nor low. 5 is low, so 6 should be high. But 6 is also in limbo. Let's check the other side. Input 13 is low, output 12 is in limbo, this is wrong. 11 is noisy, 10 is also in limbo. And finally 9 is high, so 8 should be low. But it's not really. On these chips, for a signal to be considered high, it needs to be over around 2.5 volts, and for low, it should be 0.5 volts at most. If it's somewhere in between, I call it in limbo. As we can see, this chip is definitely faulty. Now, keep in mind signals could be held high, low, in limbo, or be like one of the pins noisy by components external to the chip. But for the time being, let's focus on the chips themselves. Okay, I've seen enough, time to swap it out for a new one. Desolder the old one. Confirm with the tester that it is indeed bad. Also confirm that the replacement is good. Install a socket. Put in the new chip and let's see what we get. The LED now turns off, so we have progress. The motor though is still spinning, so we aren't out of the woods yet, so on to the next chip. The second chip in line on the reset circuit is called UB1. This is another NOT logic gate, designation 7406. Same procedure, first a merry-go-round of the pins. But there's already an issue on the first output. On pin 1, there's a signal from the previously fixed chip, which upon turning the drive on goes high and then back low. But the output always stays high. It should instead go low for a moment and then back high, the opposite of the input. So let's swap this one out as well. Now on this particular drive, the chip on the board is a 7416, but I'm going to swap it out for a 7406 as per the schematics. Just a second, Spider Bob Sensei is here making sure everything is within proper specs. Power on, and the motor stopped spinning. Great, let's take a peek at the pins, see them on the scope. 
the input is okay and that comes from the first chip and the output is also okay it goes from high to low and then rises again with its capacitor the c46 mark the faulty chips and throw them away time to finally test it on the c64 unfortunately as we can see this drive isn't fully repaired yet it's stuck on the searching message the loading message does not appear time to do more digging this time i'm going to take a look at the attention signal on the serial interface we should have an attention signal going into this 6522 via chip and an attention acknowledged then coming out of it note the signal also goes through the new ua1 chip let's check the board and see what we got even before powering on the c64 the signal here is not as it should be as we'll see on a good drive next the signal should at this time be high power on the c64 now it does go low which is correct but upon requesting a directory listing goes in limbo and gets stuck there let's now compare it to a good drive the attention sensing pin is high Turn on the 664, signal goes low. Request a directory listing, attention goes high and then back low when done. Ignoring the UD3 chip for a moment, there is nothing in between the new UA1 chip and the UC3 VIA chip. So this VIA is 99% bad. What I'll do is remove the VIA and see what happens to the signal without it. If it goes high all the way, as it should, I'll then replace the chip. Request a directory listing, and the signal now goes properly high. We have confirmation of a faulty VIA. Since all the big chips on this drive are already socketed, this is an easy swap. New VIA in. Look, we have error blinking. This means the drive is finally able to communicate with the C64, but since there is no floppy in the drive, it throws an error. Alright, we're nearing conclusion, just a few more things to do. First of all, clean the head and lubricate the rails. Next, use a Commodore demo floppy for the following procedures. First, set the proper rotation speed. These drive variants had a stroke pattern on the spindle to facilitate the speed adjustment. The technician would sync the turning spindle to the blinking of some sort of strobe lights. Nowadays I can simply point a smartphone to it, set it to 60 or 50 Hz or FPS and look through the screen. If it has an apparent shifting counterclockwise or clockwise, it needs some adjustments. If the pattern is not moving, the speed of the drive is correct. Let's see how we're set. I'll amend it just a bit. Adjust it with the trimmer. Let's see now. Looks presentable. Next, let's see how the head is aligned. It's almost passable. Track reading is good, but the between tracks percentage should be below 80. Aligning the stepper motor can be a very finicky, time consuming, sometimes even irritating process. So I won't show all of it here. Simply unscrew these two screws and rotate the motor by microns if possible. Let's see the result. Not great, not terrible. Let's finish up with a performance test. Now I can finally move over to the C64 and try to load the game with the help of my young Padawan here. Thanks for watching, goodbye from the chicken farm and I'll see you in the next one.